hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial uh, in today's video we are going to discuss about uh, another elementary signal which is used in the analysis of uh, systems uh, analog and digital systems which is the sinusoidal signal okay it is one of the most basic signals that we come across uh, while studying uh, signals signal processing and uh, systems analysis of systems so basically uh, continuous first as we did in all the analysis of the elementary signals first we will go to the continuous time domain analysis and then the discrete time domain so in the continuous time uh, domain a sinusoidal signal can be represented as let's say a sin omega t or we can also write it as a sin omega t plus minus phi okay so here a is the amplitude of the signal the peak value then omega is the angular frequency okay and t is the time okay this is the basic representation of a sinusoidal signal this is the basic representation of a sinusoidal signal okay so let us remove these let us draw a sinusoidal signal so for that we will have the time axis and then the amplitude axis this x t and t first we'll draw the base we'll go with this a sin omega t so we know sin 0 is 0 so the signal will always start from here and then it will have positive and negative values so here also it will be like this like this and so on okay so this is a sinusoidal signal now as I uh, told you, the process of conversion of a continuous time signal, okay, this is all in the continuous time domain. The continuous time domain. This is all the analysis are all done in the continuous time domain. So, this is the amplitude the peak positive and negative amplitude okay then the distance between two similar points okay two similar points suppose we pick this point and this point it is the period okay this is the period and the frequency of the signal is the number of waves passing through a point in one second it is f which is the reciprocal of the time period so these are some of the key points that we all know okay and the unit of this frequency is generally represented in hertz and this is in radians per second angular frequency is represented in radians per second okay so so this is uh, some of the basic concepts related to the continuous time sinusoidal signal now the process of conversion of a continuous time signal into discrete time signal so first we have to take samples of this continuous time sinusoidal signal following the sampling criteria the nyquist sampling theorem that is the sampling frequency must be greater than or equal to twice of the maximum 
signal frequency this is the sampling theorem so if we take samples of this continuous time sinusoidal signal it will look something like this okay we are taking samples at equidistant points equal intervals suppose we take samples at each one second then we have to take samples at each one second one two three four five six seven eight suppose we take samples at every two seconds then we have to start at zero two four six eight ten every multiple of two so this is the uh, principle so we are taking samples of this sinusoidal signal like this okay so this is the discrete time representation if we remove these things the blue portions if we remove the blue portions and only leave the black portions the black uh, lines then that is the discrete time representation okay the discrete time representation of the sinusoidal signal the blue wave it represents the continuous time representation of the sinusoidal signal and the black straight lines they are this is the discrete time representation of the sinusoidal signal okay now the time period of the continuous time signal okay the time period of the continuous time signal is uh, we know that the angular frequency okay the angular frequency is given by 2 pi f okay 2 pi f or we can say that the angular frequency can also be written as omega is equal to 2 pi by t we can write it as 2 pi by t so the time period okay from this from this omega equals to 2 pi by t the time period can be written as 2 pi by t omega this is another important thing time period is equal to 2 pi by omega from this and this f is the 1 by t so we replaced f with 2 pi into 1 by t and then we took t to the lhs so t went to the numerator in the lhs omega came to the denominator in the rhs so t became 2 pi by this is the continuous time representation now the discrete time representation the discrete this is the continuous time representation now let us talk about the discrete time representation so if we remove these blue portions this if we remove the blue portions then this is the discrete time representation okay the discrete time representation the discrete time representation of the sinusoidal signal the black straight lines at the points where the samples are taken which represents the amplitude of the signal only at those points so this is the 
discrete time representation and it is represented just by replacing t with n x n is equal to a sin omega n or we can write x n as a sin omega n plus minus phi but phi is the phase angle difference a is the amplitude omega is the angular frequency n is the discrete time there t was the continuous time okay t is the continuous time n is the discrete time and phi is the phase angle difference okay so here again we have to change this is x n and this is n now we just uh, uh, found out that for the continuous time representation the continuous time the time period is given by 2 pi by omega the discrete time period is represented as capital m which is given by 2 pi by omega into m and an important thing okay the discrete for the discrete time sequence an important thing is that both n and m okay sorry the small m should be integers no decimal or fractional numbers are allowed they should be integers okay n and m should be integers so this is the discrete time the time period of the discrete time sequence and this is for the time period of the continuous time signal the sinusoidal signal okay so here we have made uh, the analysis of the sinusoidal signal in both the continuous time domain and the discrete time domain so these are some of the key points that you should remember and remember this is just the basic introduction we are going to go deep into this okay the shifting and there are a lot of operations on the signals how uh, to find out the periodicity and it will be very uh, confusing to incorporate to insert that in a single video because you will be you will feel lost that's why i am making videos short videos and focused topics okay focusing one topic at a time so that you can understand that concept in a better way so there is there is a lot of things that can go into this and we will discuss that in separate videos with focused objectives okay so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much